coming at you live from episode 20 of Life on the Rocks with your host, Connor LaRock. Today's featured guest in the hot seat is my good friend, Don Larson. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Honestly, it's an absolute pleasure to have Don on the show. For anybody who doesn't know, Don is honestly a marketing expert around the city of Sudbury. She also owns Navigator Marketing, which operates all across Ontario. Let's just get some stats here for a second. Dawn also was the Businesswoman of the Year, uh, rated by Thunder Bay's Businesswoman Network. She is also the Enterprising Company of the Year through Peril. So there's a number of stats that go along here, but Dawn is honestly one of the most prestigious marketers within the city of Sudbury. I see all her stuff, works with a number of different companies and corporations, some big, some small. Let's get this started. Dawn, what got you started in business? Well, I used to own restaurants for 14 years, and it was a hard gig, uh, you know, marketing your businesses. I, I have a degree in business, but uh, we, you know, nothing prepares you for business like the real business. And so I did. I worked with restaurants in my own restaurants for 14, 15 years, wow. and uh, and it was in Thunder Bay. So we had fine dining restaurants with really elaborate food, and it was in a labor town. So back in the day, and it was a really uh, difficult challenge, but we did really well. Won a few awards for our restaurants, and it was great. Great business experience. I can only imagine, yeah. Yeah, and so before that I actually lived in Bermuda and uh, worked there and British business is so incredibly um, strategic and so we were there for four years uh, working in the hospitality industry. I was doing programming of computers and it was just an amazing business experience. So really led the way to owning uh, restaurants and then obviously now marketing company. Wow. Uh, yeah, so it's great. Great experience. That's, that's crazy. You go in from, you know, you're coming in from a background in dealing with food, a number of different things, yep. dining, then all the way to marketing. What led you into the marketing sphere? Well, um, I, you know, I had the degree in business. I thought I was really going to go and, and work for somebody else. And then uh, when I got married, my husband was very entrepreneurialistic. I really caught the bug. So I've been self-employed okay. since 19. So uh, wow. I'm almost 50 now. And so, no, wait, no. Okay, yeah, just, yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so it's been a great adventure, and it's been ups and downs, right? Because, you, you know, you go from feast to right? famine, and, and you learn the ups and downs. But you really learn how to, to dig and really, um, you know, employ good customer service so Definitely. so yeah so with that I started uh, working with him and, and we opened restaurants and then when we divorced um, we uh, I had to start over with nothing and uh, I really knew marketing I'd done a lot of marketing for my businesses the internet was coming into full swing and uh, so we started a marketing company and just employed really really good experts and wow. that surrounded me and we've been doing well ever since just uh, you know not just in Thunder Bay we've moved to Sudbury, we have Timmins, uh, all over Ontario now we have small offices, so it's been great. No, that honestly is incredible, and you started back in 2002, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so 2002, and then you look, you started in an era kind of when things were transitioning, right? Marketing might not have been as heavy, and now you have all these marketing gurus online, a different, you know, kind of a different sphere. What does your company offer specifically? So you guys do search engine optimization, you also do web development, I've seen social media, you're, help, you're working, like I said, with, you know, corporations from then small businesses to entrepreneurs. Yeah, well, people come to us, uh, business owners come to us when they want to grow their business from where they are to where they want. To, to grow it and so they're looking for increased profile increased leads increased sales and a really uh, increase in web traffic and so our agency really does it all um, we are any you know offline marketers as well as online our specialty though is online and that's okay. where we've really got a reputation uh, across Canada and our focus is uh, you know we, we deal with the small entrepreneur we're dealing with a lady who wrote a book today um, somebody who was doing a construction business um, a neurosurgeon yesterday uh, doing their website However, we do focus on car dealerships uh, across Canada and casinos. Those are our two really? areas that we really work with. Yeah. Two different things, but come back, I guess, mm -hmm. in terms of sales, right? It's yep. going to be pumping, generating some revenue through there. I find that interesting. So I want you to walk this through because I, I see you as like the face of that company in a sense that you're like the strategic mind, right? So when you're going with different clients, let's say from a casino, then you're doing a car dealership, even to a restaurant or a client, mm -hmm. I want you to walk me through this for a second um, in terms of... Do you, like how do you set up your strategies for different different people? You look at the markets and stuff like that when you're going to be developing a plan for these different businesses. Well, it is interesting. A company owner or a business owner will come to me and they say we're, we're we're very unique, and they are. They either have a unique product or service or a unique message, but the strategies behind getting their message out are very 
uh, similar because you need to build their profile and there's a lot of strategies both online and offline that work and so we always are on the latest uh, you know techniques and trends but we all we through the great part is now with online marketing you really really know what's working you know the old time with billboards and print and mass advertising numbers, right? there's numbers now and our entrepreneurs really call us to make sure we have our numbers to show them which is great and print radio TV can't give you those numbers Absolutely. and so that's the great part um, now people are coming to us and saying this is where we are how can you help us where before we were knocking on doors saying you know online marketing is great and they're like we don't believe you you know our print guy says different yeah. and so uh, so anyway our strategy is really to build a client's profile so long before a product is launched we work with manufacturers to really you know market their company like it's already launched Definitely. or like they're already selling it and uh, and then we build leads and so we're always having lead generation tools in place both online and offline to you know talk to people ongoing and upsell and cross sell ongoing and make them our ambassadors because a lot of people who refer navigator have not done business with navigator but interact with us or interact with our clients and have heard great things so with that you know you want to make sure you're developing your leads then it's your sales and the sales is always happening but there's always happening on different levels so on your website when you answer the phone um, at a dealership or your uh, business uh, when you interact with paperwork when you are at a festival and a trade show everything makes a difference so when we work with clients we work right from the branding to the key messages when they're when their staff are greeting customers to when there's problems we deal with a lot of how to communicate with problems uh, because problems aren't a bad thing when customers complain they actually really care and they're giving you some information yeah. the ones you really worry about are the clients who don't complain and just walk away and go somewhere else exactly so, yeah. so we work right through that process and then there's the upselling the cross-selling and asking for referrals uh, and then always the ongoing, right? It doesn't matter who that client is. We either want them to buy a new car or come back and uh, play a, a game or repurchase or, or you know more clothing. And so with that, we're constantly uh, having incentives and recognition to get them back in. And it always has to be innovative so that they're not bored with us. Exactly, yeah. Because there's a lot of information out there that people can really, you know, a lot of noise, yeah. A lot of noise, a lot of stuff that's too conventional. And you're looking at it, you're like, okay, I've seen this thing 50 times. Now you want to do something different, so then you stand up. Right? right and that was the other question I want to frame to Don was I was thinking about it for a second you know how important is marketing in terms of distinguishing yourself so let's say we have two entrepreneurs just for instance and mm -hmm. you take these high-profile entrepreneurs like Gary Vaynerchuk Rand Cardone people in, that are you know high up there in yep. the industry yep. it's like what do they do differently exactly to get them where they are so I want to talk to you because I see that with your company you guys can look online you see the huge testimonial list they have with their company um, so you must be doing something like you said it's that innovation Mm -hmm. uh, the execution, obviously, is primarily what's led to your, your success of your company, correct? Well, people come to us because we're results-driven, so Definitely, that's great. Yeah. But what got us to where we are, really, and it works for any company, is that marketing is about influencing attitudes and behaviors before the sale. And sales is actually the transaction exactly. of the sales. So there's a lot of work before somebody signs a contract. In fact, 78% of uh, marketing um, closes a deal, and the last bit is the sales. So when you know that, and you know that everything is really marketing influencing people's attitudes and behaviors then you realize that everything you do better work to increase your profile your leads and your sales and if it doesn't do that as well as web traffic then those actions you're taking aren't worthwhile and so we spend a lot of time in that area really influencing people's attitudes and behaviors uh, towards the companies we work with and we see it we can measure it we can gauge it in, in you know leads we can engage it in sales but we can also engage um, gauge it on engagement on social media so you know last night we were doing a Facebook live for an auction and there's 53,000 people 53. in Ontario watching the Facebook That's live wild. and watching the auction but I'm also while I'm filming the Facebook live engaging with those people because they're asking me questions and so it's a real interesting dynamic because you couldn't do that before right yeah. and it was a so it's a it really opened up uh, the world right you're talking to people all over the world we have customers all over North America you know a fitness change in a fitness chain in Chicago and we've never met the customer and they've been our customer for seven years wow that's crazy mm -hmm. just like that that's the online sphere opening the world of, of the, opening up your world to a number of different things yeah um, I think it's so important nowadays like it's like now your company can actually engage with the consumer right you take these big companies I can go on LinkedIn right now find a number of CEOs reach out to a hundred of them maybe one answers but it's just that one person could open a door to such or a number of different things right 
Um, I think what happened for a long time, and, and this is just my observation with some things, is that you know a lot of these you know high profile celebrities or companies, what was happening, I think you've seen the, the kind of the trend is that they wouldn't engage with their people, and it's just almost as if okay, they're just a sale to us, mm -hmm. right? And then we're trying to get out, you know, or trying to get out of that era. Now we're in more of an open age where you have to engage with those people. That's where you build that following, that association. You're not just another number to them. Um, I think that's another thing you see some of these profiles that are going through the roof. Guys like Gary Vaynerchuk, he's you know he's always on the go, and next thing you know, he's constantly engaging with his, his audience, sending tweets. He has videos going out, and I think it's about building that omnipresence, as Grant Cardone would say. Absolutely, you got to be everywhere. It's like all of a sudden they're there, like they see you, they're like, Where, does that person ever stop? And it's yeah. that association, that marketing, right? It's actually easier for us now ever, than ever before to do marketing. And so, using Gary Vaynerchuk for an example, my 19-year-old knows all about Gary Vaynerchuk and his uh, philosophies and principles. But so do my 70 year old friends. So it's amazing that he's touched everybody, but he's done it because of the magic of video. And video has worked really well for Navigator. We do quick, uh, you know, three to five minute uh, tutorial videos. Like just, hey, you know, when we talk to our customers, it's like I'm talking to them, you know, when they're in front of me. And I say, here's how you should use your Facebook to engage your followers. Here's how you could uh, fix your front, uh, you know, front entrance or front presentation to make a difference. Here's what you could do to your phone on hold. Uh, on hold phone, you know, to make it more captivating and, and engage in sales. And those three minute videos have generated so much business for Navigator. And all we do, and here's the other part you were saying about the CEOs. CEOs don't really read emails as much and they're not on all the social media, but there's two places they're on. They'll um, w watch their, uh, they'll look at their email if it says there's a video in it. And if the video is under three minutes, 85% of them will watch it. Really? They and if the video is on LinkedIn, 90% of them will watch it. Seriously, so, well. you know, if you're looking, if you're, you know, if you're looking to do business to business, it's great. But video works for consumers on Facebook and LinkedIn and, and YouTube. So, I mean, video has really, those two people you spoke about are, you know, huge, huge influence of video. But they've used video in small snippets and done very well. Yeah, I know it gets at it because people don't have the attention span anymore. We want to move on. We're in such a fast paced world. Um, going off of that for a second, so being that obviously marketing and sales go hand in hand, I want you to talk to me a little bit about the sales side now because obviously you're an entrepreneur. As entrepreneurs, we all have to go out there and sell. And I know there's a huge stigma associated with selling. Well, you're coming in there and take my money, which is not the case because all sales really is. If you're a true salesperson and entrepreneur, we're in the relationship building business. Mm -hmm. I was talking to Amanda Zerkowski on here a number of weeks ago, and that's one of the things that people I think have the wrong stigma associated with it, with your company will not you know, thrive if you're not able to generate sales, you're not offering a product that you're gonna sell, right? I want you to talk to me about the whole, the stigma behind sales and how you kind of transition around that with your company, because you're adding so much value. All right. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I know. Yeah. You know what? Um, when I first got into marketing, I love being behind my computer and, and influencing attitudes and behaviors without kind of being in front of my computer. But I realized that sales is a big part of it. And so I really uh, went on the philosophy that I'm uh, out there to educate. And like a that. better educated consumer is going to make better decisions. He may not go with our company, but he or she will be better informed. And that will be good for their business. And I thought, you know what? That's more important to me than anything. And what happened as a result is then people will call me in for that meeting. And that meeting is here. I'm going to give you three things that are going to help your business if you use us or not. And uh, that education process, and that really is what it is. I'm here to help you learn some things and then you can either see if they're going to apply to your business it's been hugely successful um, you know Skype calls in-person calls and uh, and so many of my colleagues have used that and really seen a big difference yeah. because it isn't selling we're here to add value and build help relationships and, and build relationships and help people build their uh, business and uh, grow and with that it really makes a difference it really you see a difference when you pull out the sales and you realize that we're bringing value it doesn't matter we have some people that work in the health care field and, and people were shy of being sa uh, doing sales I look at the yoga company and I say remind your staff that you are actually helping people relax you're helping them de-stress you're teaching them new ways to find uh, you know calmness in their life when we did that with that staff the sales skyrocketed okay. but it's the same thing with it doesn't matter if it's you know um, you know a film studio or if it's uh, you know a movie theater we're giving people an experience and if we realize that it's not about selling them an experience exactly I think that's that you just hit the, the 
I was going to say the hammer on the nail. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. put the quote together yeah. for a second. Yeah, because I've seen that. Like, for a long time, I had some of the best experience I did. I only did a five-month skit selling door-to-door. -door. It was one of those things. I graduated university. I'm thinking, okay, yeah, I'm going to go to university. I'm supposed to go to law school. Turns out I'm going selling door-to-door, -door, selling ADT alarms. And it was the funniest thing because you're going to the door, and right away, they you know, it's either, okay, you're either coming to preach about something yeah. or you're going to go to the door with something to sell. And it was a very hard experience. But it taught me a lot because it was one of those things that they know instantly. As soon as they open that door, they're coming. You're coming to sell them something. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I'm trying to protect your home because I was selling ADT alarms. Yes. I'm just trying yeah. to explain the variance. You have kids. You're doing all this stuff. But I think too many people take away from that aspect. Oh, you're one of those salespeople. I embrace it. Mm -hmm. I seriously sit back at the end of the day. I embrace it. I have nothing to hide. I'm not coming here to take your money. If you don't want what I have, I seriously have a lot of things I can add of value. We can boost each other up. Yeah. You know, you look at your top entrepreneurs. They're all salespeople. Yeah. I wait for the ADT people to come and yeah. I hire them. Exactly. <laughs> my business cards ready because they're great. Because they're great at relationship building. They're very good at being down to earth and they're very good at quickly making uh, a connection with Definitely. the customer. And uh, yeah, they're there for a sale. But you know what? You feel great when you you've met a great salesperson. Yeah. And uh, you don't feel like it, you were intimidated. You feel like, wow, I, I got something out of that interaction. Exactly, because at the end of the day, it's not about ourselves. And I want to actually ask you about that. You do a lot of charity work too. Uh, but before we go into that for a second, so you're talking about hiring people. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I always tell people in terms of hiring people, I mean, you can get the most educated person sometimes. They're looking, it's like, okay, I look at this resume. They have a huge extensive degree um, of, of things on the resume. But then you're talking to them. They can't really communicate. I look for the person sometimes. If I were to pull someone in, I would look them right in the eyes. And you look at that person with that fire. Yep. That's what I want, the hunger, because that's like the intangible variable you have. It's yep. like I'm looking for the hungry person because why? They're going to push it past that threshold, right, emotionally. Yep. Uh, how about yourself? When you're hiring someone, I want to just ask you about that. Well, if you've ever seen any of our job ads, they're pretty unique. Uh, like the skills are the last three lines. The first ten lines are about attitude and aptitude and that. resourcefulness. Are you resourceful? Can you find things? Do you do you believe that people are a great and do you want to be around people? Um, can you uh, you know change your mind uh, uh, quickly because you're always so adaptability and everything. When people read it, they're like, really? And then your skills are at the end, and it's like I can bring anybody in with the right attitude. And I can teach them, you know, get them accredited and everything in all the in marketing, but I can't teach resourcefulness or attitude or aptitude, and those are magic. Those are the intangible skills you need to have, and especially when something happens, it's like, you know, you can have, you can read all the books in the world, you can do all these things, but like we go back, if you can't execute, all of a sudden something happens. You're sitting there like, oh crap, what do I do? You know, you, ha you have no emotion, to, or you, you get too emotional towards it, you can't make those decisions. That's another thing I want to go off of for a second. You see a number of people I find in today's world, one of the most intangible skills I think it is, it's being able to make quick decisions. Mm -hmm. Most people can't think on their feet. I, I used to sit in classrooms and lectures, and it was great. I, I wasn't that kid that was a loud mouth in class, but I always want to engage. Mm -hmm. Teacher's there, you're paying money, let's go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's yeah. ask some questions. I'm yeah. not in there being arrogant. I was just asking very thought-provoking questions. Mm -hmm. Stirs up a conversation. Yeah. And I find a lot of people, when you get into it, if you want to have some fun, like I had a teacher, uh, one of my favorite profs, Dr. Braun, he would always just wait for someone to engage. He wanted that, right? Yeah. Because it got the whole classroom going. Yeah. Uh, but I find that's a skill a lot of people don't have, and it's one of the most valuable skills, just being able to think fast. You know, it's not about being smartest, it's about being strategic. That's the core. Yes. Strategic is really important. And we use the word strategy a lot in our office because it's always anticipating what's going to happen, the upside, the downside to your, uh, your decision, but quickly making that. And then being okay that you made the decision, having the latitude in your company to make that decision, but also being okay when it doesn't work out. I mean, um, we obviously don't want to make mistakes when it gets out to the customer, but in our labs and things, we experiment and we let our you know, staff obviously do a lot of experimentation and things like that but yeah you know what you really it's being strategic and forward thinking and proactive what's next what's got to happen and how am I going to get there exactly anticipations everything mm -hmm. in that terms I'm going to anticipate the markets what's going to happen I'm thinking what's three months six months to a year mm -hmm. and most people are thinking well what am I going to eat for breakfast and it's like I already thought about that no I'm kidding yeah. uh, but crossing over here for a second so I wanted to touch base on your philanthropy or how do I say that properly your charity Philanthropic there side, go. there we go, that's a literary term. Uh, but I want to talk about some of your charity work and the importance of giving back to the community. Talk to me about that for a second. Well, uh, I came from uh, being a single mom that you know was very close to having to you know go to a food bank at one point in my life, and I realized really early on that you know um, you know getting through where I was in a bad place that lots of people end up there and don't have help, and so I really wanted to give back to the community. So I focused a lot on women's issues and uh, worked a lot in, in you know women's groups as the president of the Business and Professional Women's Network for a while, and we've, we've done a lot of free work for a lot of charities. I think over the years. 
years. We get, the team calculated they were doing a bio for a charity group not too long ago. I think we're up to about $6 million that Navigators that. raised wow, doing some kind of initiative for the community. So, um, yeah, it's important. And you know what? It's important not with a, something to get back. It's to see somebody else get ahead, you know, uh, that I love, especially with single parents. I see a lot of single moms, and I was a single mom for uh, 18 year, 19 years, and you can do it and you can have a business and you can have success. Uh, but you know, not too long ago, I sat back here, you know, sitting here at my camp and thinking, I wish this younger me could have, you know, the older me could have said to the younger me, it's gonna be okay. Yeah. And, and your, your kid's gonna be great and you're going to have the things that you need and want and you're gonna be able to travel to places. But you really, um, you know, giving back to the community, I think helped um, me feel great about you know getting there so exactly it makes you feel whole at the end of the day it's one of those things that I think our society and you know I'm not I'm not meaning to be biased in here but I think a lot of our society and I look up down charity campaigns as mm -hmm. well everything's focused too much on the individual that's how our society is going it's competitive and that's fine from a motivational stand you know everyone's got to compete you want to it makes everybody better but in terms of giving back I think that's one of the most important things we can do as people because that's what's gonna make you feel whole. I tell everybody the same thing. If you feel like crap one day, go help somebody. Yeah. You know what I mean? You see that smile. Absolutely. Well, three things that I think are really important because I work with over 155 charities in Sudbury right now, wow. and they're aching for volunteers. And you know, the aging population, they're just saying, you know, at the Knights of Columbus, it's the, you know, the uh, Lions Club, they're looking for other volunteers. And it's a great experience. They're wonderful people, but the the work they do is so incredible. And, and they need you. They need young people, uh, and they need pe your skills. And so can't find a job. There you go. There's a solution. There, so go ahead. Well, go that's, ahead. That's yeah, that's the my thing. That, part of it. That's my thing. I, yeah. I got my skills from volunteering. My first job was at the Elizabeth Fry Society, volunteering. Um, you know, I've had people come and volunteer in my office to learn marketing. Uh, they've gone off and opened their own marketing company wow. here in Sudbury. I mean, you have a lot of people that volunteering makes a difference and it helps you with your skills it gives you a lot of uh, you know network of people exactly. but the other part is it, it opens up a lot of friends right uh, you know friendships so so three things you know your skills you develop the friendships you make and the impact you have on the community is huge it's huge perfect and this is my last question because it's the most important so the way I look at you Don I see you as a, a very influential figure for women you're someone to look up to for you know the younger generation coming up I want you to talk to me for a second so I know I was talking to a man Sarkozy uh, number of weeks ago, like I said, and she's in a completely male-dominated environment, and she's out selling them all. She's literally top 1% of the company, and that's the way I, I envision you. The same thing, right, where you're going in, like, especially today's age, you see, you know, some of the top CEOs in the world are women, right? I want you to talk about this for a second, you know, how, you know, we have these certain stigmas associated, you know, towards women in male to dominate envi or environment. Like, we, we need equality, right? That's what I'm trying mm -hmm. to hammer off. Sorry, that didn't come out the way it was supposed to. That's okay. No, it's so good. I want to talk about equality. Yeah, well, uh, I'm in a, one of those big male dominated uh, industries, yeah. and 99% uh, of my clients are male. And she's killing it, by the way. Just saying, sorry, go and ahead. It's, it's been a challenge. It's a challenge to just focus on business and, and get things done. And it's a, a challenge to, um, you know, get the credibility and recognition um, to get into the door uh, sometimes when you're female. And it's still there. It is, you'll see on International Women's Week, I'm you know pounding the uh, let's get you know equal because uh, every day I bounce up uh, that door where it's not. So uh, I'm glad that you know I deal with uh, great customers who are obviously amazing to deal with. But it's, uh, it's incredible that that still exists. But I'm going to tell you that uh, it's possible to be a single parent, own a business, volunteer in the community, and it's possible to get where you are. Um, I always encourage you to have you know your, your part-time job while you're starting your business if you can, because uh, you definitely need to do that at the For beginning. Sure. But, you know, women are, like, there's so many incredible success stories in Sudbury. I have so many incredible uh, female friends who are entrepreneurs. Uh, there's a group of about 40 of us that hang out together. And every time I look around the room, you know, the five people you're supposed to surround yourself with, I've got 40 amazing Never. people that, you know, they keep me, you know, stepping up, which Absolutely. is incredible. So I always encourage people. When I first came to Sudbury, I didn't know anybody because I'd been away from the city for 20 years. I actually emailed. 50 people and said, I'm a new businesswoman, here's my, my little bio of me and I'm opening a business. Um, you know, friendships I made out of that. So I didn't know anybody in Sudbury, um, you know, when I came back in 2006 and out of inviting people for lunch and getting to know people, I sat on a whole bunch of boards and committee, but it really helped my business. One lady ended up bringing in and probably referring about $150,000 in business one year. Really? Uh, yeah, Kathy Najwan, thank you very much for that. You were an amazing lady. Wow, that's you. Yeah, and it was great. It was everybody from Meredith Morris from Hyundai took me out for lunch and uh, Ron Dupuy is a city councillor. He took me out for lunch. Like, 
I asked them, but they took me out for lunch, you know, and they didn't know me. And, uh, you know, people showed me around the city, and it was great. I made some incredible friendships, and people referred me a lot of business, and I didn't know a soul when I came back in 2006. That's wild. I honestly mm -hmm. think that's what I always tell people is that when you open a door, more doors keep opening, right? Yeah. Every door you keep walking through, you're going to have more, and then you meet a connection. All of a sudden, you, you can add value to them, then they open another door for you. I think that's huge, Don. I think you've done an exceptional job in the city of Sudbury because there is a lot of marketing people out there, marketing gurus, they call them. You see them all over the online sphere. Even I have a marketing firm. People, you know, for other, the other side of it, I have one, but it doesn't deal primarily with that. Mine's just social media based, right? Mm -hmm. We just have it. It's great brand exposure. We can help some people out as well. Uh, but it's one of those things. Uh, it's so important to be able to distinguish yourself in today's environment, and you've clearly done that. If you can leave the audience with one thing, because, you know, we've, we've dropped a number of different things. What is one of the most valuable pieces of advice you've ever received? You've given it all there, but I just right off the top. Well, every year I hear all these people at New Year's say, I don't believe in New Year's resolutions, but I'm a big uh, proponent of it. I really do. At New Year's Day, I sit down and I go through what I loved about the year before, what I hated about it, what I didn't work for me, what made me feel great. And then I say, okay, what do I want you know, to feel, you know, what great feelings do I want to experience? Where, what places do I want to see? And what do I want to achieve in my business? And those that, you know, January 1st and July 1st are my two big days where I evaluate where I am and where I want to be and I make it happen. And uh, I really believe that that's an important thing. You can't manage what you don't measure and if you don't know where you are, you can't go to where you want to be. I think that was huge. you got to have targets right there. Mm -hmm. Honestly, Dawn, that's awesome. So what can we expect next from you? Well, uh, we uh, like just twenty things. I bet. Sorry, go we ahead. just opened a new uh, a new uh, kind of division of the company. It's called dealership marketing, and so we've just spread across Canada, doing wow. a lot of uh, marketing to uh, car dealerships. Uh, so we're really excited about that, um, and uh, we've already picked up like four new clients in Toronto just uh, in the last couple months. So really, that's huge. Yep. Okay, so for anyone else out there, I tagged John in this video. Give them your Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever you'd like, and then we're good to go. Okay, super. Well, thanks for the opportunity. It was great. It was a pleasure, honestly. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.